Hey, NBA Hopefuls, we are live on the air with NBA Waves, your weekly vidcast talking all things business and education every Tuesday, bringing you tons of tips to help you get into a top-ranked NBA program and getting you up close and personal with many of these schools that we host on the show where you can get all your questions answered. If you don't know NBA Waves, I'm your host, Eric Lucrezia from Candidate Coach, a boutique admissions consulting firm. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Barra Sapir. Hey, Barra. Hey, how how's it I'm, going? I'm good. Why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Bara Sapir. I am CEO of City Test Prep, a full service test preparation company. And we just launched also Mindflow, which is a separate company. And it's a mindful speed reading platform to help test takers. GMAT, GRE, executive assessment, all of them. So that's me. And my butterflies are doing good. I think they're going to hatch by next session, which you might not be on, but Eric, but it's um i'm really excited i've got about 20. so barry's been keeping us posted about some butterflies growing in her backyard over in the bay area uh near san francisco you're in my house so, now oh really yeah so this week's episode of nba waves episode 54 is all about finalizing your nba essays for round one for those of you who are applying for the first admissions round this is really important and this week we're very excited to have with us kritika srinivasan joining us from india hi kritika Hey guys, hello. Hi, Eric and Dara. Such Hi. a pleasure to meet you. I wanted to mention also that Dara and I know Kritika thanks to AGAC. And for those of you who don't know AGAC, it's the Association for International Graduate Admissions Counselors, for which Kritika has been, well, is the outgoing president. So I'm really grateful to have gotten to know her. And she, thanks for that. Thanks to AGAC. She's here with us today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you know yourself, your company, and AGAC? Sounds great. Thanks. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Kritika. I have worn many hats. Like one of it is to design a three wheeler uh, in which I travel sometimes now. <laughs> uh, proud of it. Uh, but yeah, like I run uh, co Career Labs along with a couple of the co-founders and our mission in life is to make sure that people are able to uh, reach their career dreams faster and always like explore their paths rather than uh, stumble upon the very first one that they find. And um, I have been an uh, admissions consultant for almost eight years now, uh, professionally, and quite quite some, uh, I should say, 12 years plus, uh, when you think about all the essays that I would have helped my uh, juniors and others edit. Um, I love stories, which is why I'm in this business. And I'm associated with AGAC, which is also uh, Association of International Graduate Admissions Consultants. Quite a mouthful, for short. But yes. AGAC is like the professional forum that makes sure that um, incredibly talented people like Eric and Barra and I get to meet and then exchange uh, stories along with meeting with other um, admissions consultants from across the best schools so that we can share that live information with you all. So with that, I hope to uh, help you craft your best stories and put your best application forward today. Absolutely. And so, yeah, as I mentioned, we're talking about essays, you know, Nearly all MBA programs require at least one, if not a few essays. And for those who are applying for round one, those deadlines are coming up just around the corner, usually in early September for some of the top schools, particularly in North America. So let's just start with the basic question. How important would you say the SR essays are in the big picture of your application? And uh, as always, since Kritika is our guest, I'll let her respond first and then go around the room. Thanks, Eric. And, you know, one of my pet peeves with many of the applicants when they start their application is that they don't spend as much time on their essays as they do on GMAT. Uh, and especially in this part of the world, many people spend quite a lot of time uh, on GMAT because uh, in India, especially as you know, um, we are a country that's groomed to take tests and <laughs> we depend on everything on tests. Uh, so everyone thinks like, oh, I get a 760 or a 740 or a 770 and right. I'm all set. Uh, but the thing is, um, I should say that the essays are given equal, if uh, if not sometimes more importance than GMAT in, as you know, in various different uh, universities and different MB applications. And I feel that um, people don't uh, people need to be putting in as much time, uh, more of on strategizing their essays rather than anything else. Uh, so. Um, the actual execution, I say, takes very limited time. So anyone can write a 300-word essay once you know what you're going to write. But arriving at what it is and the thought process typically takes a long time. So I would say, yes, it is such an uh, important component that's often overlooked. And second thing is, it uh, you know it, uh, it actually is like more to the eye 
than like what you might assume. So it's harder. Mm-hmm. Barry, you're obviously from a, a long testing background. I'm sure you have some comments there. Well, I was thinking um, as Kritika was speaking about how tests are very measurable. So when you're practicing and you're learning the material, you're able to see your progress as you move along. And I think that in a real high pressure situation as writing your essays and applying to these programs and, and working, many people are working at the same time, there's, there's a safety in applying and spending that much time on your tests. And so there's this cycle, I'm, I just, I'm just bringing in the psychological reasoning behind why people might spend time, more time on the tests because it's so, it's so much more of an absolute, even though you go in, if you study and you take diagnostics, you should know exactly how you're gonna perform on test day. And that feels really good. When you're writing essays, it's so much more of an art form and it's so much more vulnerable and it's so much more, it's it's subjective, right? And it's, I think that it's a different process. And so I think people tend to gravitate towards what's, what's more of a sure thing, you know, the number, mm-hmm. seeing your improvement, whereas the essays, you're not gonna get the feedback unless you're working with an admissions consultant, a, a good one, AGAC, um branded <laughs> or otherwise you know just just because then you're going to get someone who can say like you've spent enough time on the test you've got a 780 you don't need an 800 now you really need to focus on on your test or even if you're at 700 it's like okay keep that in the background make if you want to take it again do so but the essays are really important because they are so vulnerable and they really speak to character the, the test can't really they don't have character in the same way I argue that they do talk about who you are as a business professional, but they don't talk about character and they don't talk about who you are in the same way that an essay does. That's what right. I can say. I think you're absolutely on the mark that it's definitely more, the essays are more of an art form, whereas the GMAT or the GRE, if you're taking that, or the EA, you know, it's quantifiable, it's more objective, yes. it's measurable, you know, you can see progress. And I think people kind of gravitate towards something more concrete like that. Absolutely. Versus the essays, I think. On one hand, I think people just kind of take it for granted that like, oh, I know myself, I can do this, this is easy. And then when it comes down to it, like, I don't know what to write, where do I begin? And they end up procrastinating. So and at the end of the day, they often do not spend nearly enough time. I think what Kritika said is absolutely true that uh, just as much, if not more, on the on the essays, because I think uh-huh. it's very overlooked. Um, the speaking about that, I wanted to, again, asking Kritika first, what is meant by storytelling and what makes for good storytelling? in terms of like your essays and your application as a whole, what would you say? So uh, the thing about MBA essays is they come in many varieties, right? But they always have some major themes going on, which is like, you know, basically like, why did you pick us? Or uh, can you tell us a little bit about like, what are your career goals? And then like, you know, also questions on, for for example, like, you know, who are you? We want to know more, more about you as a person, as a personality, like in terms of challenges, or failures or things that you overcome. So uh, I always feel that when you look at the other components of an MBA application, like your GMAT score, uh, like even like your online application form, which gets all your ethnicity, your details and other information, like which is always like, as uh, Bara rightly said, more of objective information, like which is like numbers, your CGPA, et cetera. So that's on one side. Uh, but that doesn't paint the picture of the person and doesn't probably say under what circumstances did someone get that or like, you know, what was something that behind them. So uh, a CGPA might be like, there might be a low CGPA, but you never know that probably that person was like the only breadwinner of the family or something and they juggled their college career, uh, like along with like, you know, three other jobs. Um, so the whole circumstances and everything else behind the person is what I feel brings the fit to the table uh, mm-hmm. and and every school out there is looking for like will this person fit into my class do they have something to add to the class so i feel that uh, schools are always on the lookout for values as well as like um they know they want to know like what has brought someone to where they are as well as they want to know where is this, where does this person want to go from here and mm-hmm. what is the reason why they, they want to do that and i think any school would want to have successful alumni and as successful as possible, that's what they would want. And they always look for these traits and uh, all of these can be beautifully conveyed through stories. 
Mm. And when we talk about stories, we are not obviously talking about fairy tales, but unlike that, I think the career stories that we want to craft or like these stories or, uh, you know, instances where somebody showed probably say a value like resilience or uh, where someone is able to demonstrate leadership potential that's needed for the MBA world. So that is what I think the storytelling is all about. Kritika, I think you made the point very much about like why storytelling is important in your MBA application. And I will even say furthermore that like your story is something that's bigger than your essays. I think your story is something that is an overarching theme that is the message you're delivering about who you are, which is transmitted via your essays in a very big way, but also, you know, references, also your interview, also the, I even say the very small unofficial communications that you have, like emails or phone calls, where you're also, you have an opportunity to transmit something about yourself and the brand of you, if, if you will. Um, so you've spoken about, you know, why it's important. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, things about your experiences and, and so forth speaks about your past and present, whereas goals and potential speaks about your future. And that story is exactly what you're going to tell. But what are some key elements that make for really good storytelling in their essays? Right. So glad you asked it. I would say the first thing that I would want people to do is to answer the question. Yes. Uh, so meaning like, you know, for example, Harvard is so, uh, you know, Harvard is one of the things to paraphrase the Harvard essay. It says like, what more can you tell me other than what you've given in the application? So that's such an open ended thing. So that might take a lot of like thinking. But then there are other schools which are very clear and say that, hey, can you tell us like, what are your short term goals? What are your long term goals? And, you know, how can our school help you? So I would say that the first thing, the key elements is to answer the question. And uh, the, the second thing that I feel that where uh, applicants uh, probably like can, um, you know, uh, go off the path would be when they're not thinking about like an outline and they just like writing down things from their resume. Oh, they think like, okay, like, so let me think of a great accomplishment. It's there on my resume. I'm just going to like put it as is instead of thinking about like what helped them accomplish something or what helped them achieve something. So uh, having an outline for something and then working towards that outline would be very important. And the third thing that I always say that which is very important is to spend enough time on basic things that is needed for any essay, good proofreading, good rewriting, and then editing. Yeah. So write, rewrite, edit, proofread, again, go back to the cycle. Because what people think is uh, they think that they can get the essay in the first attempt, and that doesn't happen at all. Uh, so yeah, those would be some of the key uh, tips that I think are necessary. Thank you. And Bara, you know, you mentioned that the essay writing is more of an art form than the GMAT, which is really your expertise. But I also know very much so that you are an artist. So I wonder what, as an artist, what you would say in terms of that, you know, Putting a bit of emotion is very important into it. Take it away. Yeah, you know, what I'm thinking about is similar. I do think that taking tests, there is an art form to taking tests, even though we're talking about almost a left brain, right brain thing here in the application. And I would imagine that the essays that are the most successful are the ones that really demonstrate the kind of leadership. Even if you're not talking about your leadership, you're demonstrating through your words, you're demonstrating with how you write who you are as a person, again, the character piece. So like Krithika, you said, like, it's not a fairy tale, but in a way it is, and you do want to almost entrain the reader, right? You want to get buy-in by the folks who are reading these essays where they're like, I, this per I want more, like, I want more of this person. I want, I want to know them. I'm, I'm there. It's, there's a dynamism there. It doesn't need to be chaotic, but there's something there that's exciting, palatable, um, just like any great piece of piece of art, right? There's something that wants you asking for more in some way, even if it feels complete. I'm not talking about asking for more because it's incomplete. It's asking for more because you were just so satisfied. It's like going to a restaurant. We just went to this restaurant in Berkeley and it's this Spanish restaurant. And I was full, but I was like, I can't wait to come back here. Like this was just so delicious. And so I, I feel like it's it's capturing that, like having it be fresh enough, but that sharpness, Krithika, that you were talking about, like the grammar has to be right, the, the punctuation has to be right. Um, 
you know, you're not handing in essays like you did before, but if so, like the fonts have to be all in the same font, right? You know, like, and, and I feel like it's really, there's, there's multi layers to it. It's not just your story. It's how you tell your story. And it's, you know, you could say, yeah, I went, I spent the summer, I spent the summer in Europe, or you could say it was a different time for me, you know, like it's how you draw the person in to your story. And that's what makes a great leader, right? We want, this is leadership school. And so the essays have to usher in that. That's my, that's my artistic take on it, Eric. Yeah, thank you. I mean, if you're doing this on your own, if you're going about your application without a coach, I mean, something you can do is look up what what plays into good storytelling, right? You know, you I, I always have been inspi- I've always been inspired by Margaret Atwood. Uh, she's most yeah. for for Handmaid's Tale, right? And she's famous for saying, "Never let them get bored," right? Like, you know, you want to hook them in the beginning. You want to have some kind of story arc, <clears throat> and the conclusion has to land right so that they're thinking like, "Oh, I want to know more about this person." And I'm also not saying. To, to be like fantastic or over the top or really, you know, superlative. You want to be authentic because that's going to come out. That's going to come across too, if you're not being authentic, or I think it was you who mentioned being vulnerable. So sharing something that was either a huge challenge or something that really inspired you or um, even a failure that you learned from that you're, you know, there's those turnaround stories where you've learned from a mistake or a difficult situation that was out of your control, but you managed to overcome and here you are today. Um, it's but- getting buy-in, right? It's getting buy-in. The more, the more specific you are, the more universal your story is. And I saw yesterday, I should have, I should have kept it so I could share it, but I, it was on, I'm pretty sure it was LinkedIn or Facebook. That's one of our colleagues. And I don't remember who it is. You might know they, they put this picture of a mom with their kid and she's like, don't worry, Tommy, you're going to have a great business school essay to write or a great college essay to write one day. Right. Like, but it was also like an oh no, like don't do this. <laughs> I also want to make mention uh, with the title of the episode, you know, essays for round one. I wanted to make sure that it's clear. There's not a different approach to writing essays for round one versus two, three, or, or otherwise. Um, but it's in the context of okay, we're going for if you are going for the round one deadlines. Um, this is upon you right now, right? So here we are in like early mid August, yeah, mid August rates, you know, it's the 16th. Um, so we're looking at like about 20 days, two to three weeks left for a lot of the top schools right now. So I want to really mention something very important that although there are, you know, some clear advantages to submitting your application for the round one, that often means more scholarship potential, uh, it could be a question of competition, depending on the school, you know, some schools have more or less applicants in round one versus two. Uh, too often is the biggest, especially in North America, um, that you never want to submit your application before you're absolutely ready. So rushing and not doing this in a conscientious, conscientious, prepared way is absolutely not the way to go. And if you're not ready for round one, do not submit this application or essay <laughs> until you truly are. That is a really like golden rule that I think anyone in AGAC or here in this <laughs> chat would, would agree with. But I wanted to ask the question to the room, how do you get started? Like when you're sitting there, you're like, and what do I write about? Especially with those open-ended questions like Harvard is famous for. Uh, like Harvard, they 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 call it formulating a hypothesis. Well, what does that mean? Like, what, what do they want to know? Um, so, Critic, I'd like to start with you again, if you don't mind. Absolutely. I mean, I love the topic. And I should tell you that, um, so if it's for round one, first, like, for God's sake, get started. <laughs> You're already late in the process. And, yes. uh, and Eric, as you know, how it is September 7th, and then you have, like, a host of other schools in the coming week and you know that admissions consultants don't sleep <laughs> during this period of time yeah. but um yeah and as you said like where can you get started i always say that you know where it all started like why are you applying to b school what are your reasons what are your goals so having that specified becomes easy and then the second thing is like why are you applying to harvard for example yeah. again there's like a host of reasons and other things that you know and you need to like have that story right and the third most important thing that I, which I also feel that, you know, you also brought it up as like having the authentic voice. And that's like people not understanding like who they are or what drives them as values. So that the personality angle, as well as like, what is it that makes them uh, them? So knowing that is a third layer. And then of course, like putting them all together along with the lens of your career journey 
that is what I would say becomes, you know, helps you to write better essays. Because Eric, as you rightly mentioned before, is that like all the essays tied in along with the rest of the application component and the most important of them later on, the interview gives like a good picture of who the candidate is. And yep. if there's dissonance in any of these, like, and you feel that there's a discrepancy or, oh, the person is talking about something here and then like implying something else elsewhere, that's where I feel that the authenticity disappears. Yeah. And that's okay. because people, okay. yeah, that's because people feel that, oh no, like probably this is what Harvard is expecting. Yeah. Versus like, you know, this is what I need to tell Harvard. And this is my story. And, I, and that's where I think like what Bara said was the art form, you know, makes complete sense. And the one thing I would say that like also how do you get started is to practice the art of like, you know, uh, like just showing and not telling somebody uh, like and, and using like, and I, I know that like, you know, I sometimes tell people as a joke that you should start writing your essay before you know all these fancy GMAT words. <laughs> because then it will be like simpler and you might be able to get the point across uh, in, in uh, you know, shorter sentences and crisper sentences. Uh, but jokes apart, like people feel that they are obliged to um, portray a different writing voice than um, who they are because they think, oh, it's Howard. I'm going to use all these fancy words and so on. I think that also uh, is important. So I would like divide the whole essay writing process into two, two parts. Part number one being where you do the strategizing or more like a storyboarding or like, you know, you're getting the script ready. So these are all different components where you do your homework and keep them ready. And part number two will be to actually execute it based on what else the school is asking. So because you know the Harvard application is definitely not the same as the Stanford application, not same as Kellogg, because uh, each of them also give you different things to address in the rest of the application. Absolutely. Very different. I think that's a, a big misconception that they can just kind of apply what you've answered in one essay to all schools. And that's far from the truth. What is very common to most schools is word count. And that is one of the actually one of the most difficult things to grapple with because you have been, you know, living for between 25 and 35 years so far. You've got like between three and eight or 10 years of experience. You have a lot of things you can say about yourself. And how do you really focus and hone in on the things that are most important? Most people end up with an essay that's at least double than the word count. And then the challenge is to whittle it down, right? Saying more, having more impact with less words, less paper, less pixels, less time, uh, more impact with less. That is getting to the point is a skill in and of itself. And I think one of your first opportunities to demonstrate that skill is in your CV or resume and the second opportunity is in your essays. Um, you mentioned a few things, um, Kritika, um, and I think what comes to mind is one of the things I find myself saying is don't try to impress the schools, try to excite them or inspire them, right? Uh, impressing comes off either as arrogant or inauthentic, but uh, exciting them by sharing what, what, what you've done. You also said, um, show, don't tell. Like you want to more illustrate what you've done saying that I did this, 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 and this. And honestly, that comes off more like a CV. A CV is effectively a list. Mostly it's in bullet form. And there's a sort of golden rule. Do not repeat what is on your CV in the essays. This is what we call a waste of real estate in the industry. Real estate being the limited amount of space you have either in your, so if we're talking CV or resume, usually it's one or two pages, depending on the school, how much they'll allow you to have, right? So there's a limit there. And there's either a word or letter count in your essays or essay. And for the first time this year, Harvard introduced a word count, <laughs> whereas it was always open-ended. And that was this source of enormous stress for people trying, it was like, how much should I write? <laughs> how little should I write? Now there's a little bit more structure, but now people have the challenge of falling within that, within that word count. Um, I also have some of the things to add about getting started, but Barrett wanted to, yeah, well, I'm thinking, you know, I, I am mostly in the test prep world. Yeah. However, I've worked with many people on their essays, not just business school, just reading through them. And I've also, I'm also a published author. So I definitely, and I've also applied to many schools right, in my time, not business school. And one of the things that has been super helpful for me is just writing down the bones, like just write and not be in the process of trying to make it perfect while you're writing, but just get it out of you and then sculpt it, right? Just have, because I would say almost always when I'm writing something and I'm working on a book now, it's like the first part of it, I can just get rid of. Like the first part is just this blather that it just 
it's taking me to some place, but it's not getting me into the core of really what I want to say. And that's okay. Like I don't need to be perfect until I really refine exactly what it is. Now that just could be the way that my mind works, but it's okay to not have it down. And Kritika, like you said, like do not think you could just write it and then send it off. So it really is a process of refining. And I think all of us have said like simpler with more impact is better right? It's better for the reader because they're not getting tripped up over the, the words, right? right. GRE vocabulary. <laughs> um, but it's really, it's, it's important to just be compassionate with yourself and really just know that you'll get there. And that if you give yourself enough time, that the process is just going to be a lot easier and a lot, <clears throat> a lot less fraught because you're going to move through it in such a way that you can just refine. And when you're getting like, whenever I write, I always like copy and paste, like I cut and then I put it somewhere else if I want to come back to it. Right. Like it's the beauty of, of technology. So just enjoy, like enjoying the process and being able to laugh at yourself in it. Right. To not take yourself so seriously. I mean, it's a serious endeavor and you really want to put yourself forward, but, but having a light touch with great impact I think is is a is something that I like to go for. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Barra. Uh, something I wanted to mention that I I've mentioned before on MBA Waves, and I do this with every one of my clients. Uh, I start off with something called a storytelling interview um, to get a lot of insight to get to know them first of all, right? Who is this new person that's working with me, right? Uh, that's you know hired me to accompany them on this journey because it really is a journey. So lots of questions I ask you know, not just about their job and their goals, but like about their life, their family, their education, what inspires them, what what, what are they afraid of? Um, so really kind of digging deep into the person. And there's all these like little, you know, um, I don't know, little nuggets of ideas. Alleyways. Yes, Alleyways. right? And I, I, I call this kind of like, um, like a, an idea bank for your story, for your essays. Um, but beyond that, um, this process that, that I call researching and soul searching, I think is super important. And Kritika, you were alluding to this in the beginning that people don't spend enough time doing this. And that's absolutely the case. You know, a lot of people go straight to rankings and they say, I want top 10 and that's it. And it's like, well, you know, it's impressive to have a school with a top 10 ranking on your CV, uh, as a, you know, manager somewhere in the future, but it's very possible that the school that's the best fit for you, the most adapted to your goals, to your learning style, to your values, uh, is just happens to not be a top 10 school or not a top 10 this year because that fluctuates from year to year and from ranking to ranking. It's very much more important to find a school that is a good fit for you. You're going to be far more successful. And there are many, many thousands of people who come from schools that are not from top 10 that have amazing careers with great salaries and great positions and that are very you know happy and successful in their careers and lives. So I think the rankings, I think they serve a purpose in the beginning. They give you a lay of the land when you don't know much about the business schools out there. And as you do your research, the importance of those things fades away quite a bit. Um, and you will start to figure out and hone in on the schools that are truly the best fit for you. Um, so this is all part of the process, right? Figuring out in researching and soul searching, what I mean by that is, who are you? What are you into? What are you good at? What's going to make you money, right? <laughs> what markets in the world make sense for you to do that particular career? Because it's not going to be the same everywhere. Like tech is bigger in some places, oil and gas, automobile, you know, et cetera, entertainment industry. Um, and um, figuring out what schools are going to be the best bridge for you to get from where you are today, the person you are today, to the future version of yourself. And that, that's the process to go through. And I, I think that's what, in my mind, what Kritika was talking about, like spending time on figuring all that stuff out. Starting your MBA essay is not like creative writing, where it's like, okay, you've got a blank and just write and see what comes out. I think it's about going through this process first. And then you have, first of all, you know, the schools that make sense for you, which is going to dictate what essay questions are asked. Is it open-ended? Are they specific questions and so forth? And then when I'm working with my clients, like what I do is we set up a Google Google Drive doc uh, folder and you want to stay organized because it's very easy to get tripped up. You know, if you end up copying and pasting essays, calling the school the wrong name, if you're applying for Harvard and you say London Business School, it doesn't really look good. It's kind of like calling your wife the wrong name. I mean, it does not land well. <laughs> so you want to really be careful of that. Um, and um, yeah, in terms of like staying organized with the different folders, I think what's also helpful to do is copy 
is from the website from each school the specific question they're asking put the word count is it a max a min or an average and then I'll, very often they'll have on their own website tips that that school is providing for you of, of what they're suggesting in terms of how you approach essay writing what you should include what topics you should touch on and so forth these are all clues or keys to helping you have a successful application so copy and paste that right into the folder and then below that like i put a line and that's where you begin your essay and as you guys said, it's something that gets refined and polished over time until you have something that's perfect as it can be, spell checked, grammar checked. Um, and a tip I like to suggest to people who, um, who before submitting is have, uh, have someone else who you trust, right? Who doesn't know the essay question, read your essay. And if they can figure out what the question was being asked, you've probably done your job in terms of answering it, right? So. Lots of tips. There's a comment just came in from Thomas, one of our colleagues that we also know from AGAC. He says, never ever read essays of others that only make you sound fake. <laughs> you know, I totally agree. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people do that. They go on, um, you know, Reddit or other kind of like blog-based websites to get ideas. And you're just kind of like absorbing other people's, you know, stories, traits, personality, and so forth. And I think it's totally the wrong way to go. You're not being authentic at all there. So and I, Eric, like, I would like to make a comment here for it. You know, yes. it's like, um, so what people think is, you know, uh, so for example, they think that you want to bring like, an, uh, I mean, they think of all these people who got in with their essays as some kind of like a, um, you know, a, let's say like, you know, the original, and they are like a cover version of it. Uh, yeah. If you think about it, you know, but you, you really want your cover to like sound like you. And that's why you call it a cover and you don't want it to be like as the original, but because the questions you're probably answering is the same, the uh, the things are the same, like the word count is the same, but then that's where you want your voice to shine, right? So I completely agree with uh, Thomas. And one thing I always also tell people is like, you know, uh, please don't plagiarize. Schools are smarter, computers are smarter. And uh, you don't want to like look at all the thousand essays that are being published out there uh, to think that that's what the schools are expecting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, Barrett, do you have any, anything to add at this point or? No, not yet. I think that I think honing in, though, on this is your this is your opportunity for someone to really hear what you're saying in a particular time and place. And again, I'm just going to say you want to enjoy the process <laughs> yeah. like someone's really going to be listening to something that you have to say and like you said, Krithika, like you want to show them, not just tell them. Like you don't want to say you really want me as a candidate because blah blah blah. You want like you're telling a story. It's the hero's journey ultimately, right? It's the mm -hmm. it's it's you presenting yourself where you want people to be like a, a hell yes. They want you to be part of the process and part of their their school. Absolutely. So just one, I think, a couple more things before we wrap up today, um, thinking about explicit versus implicit questions, right? Explicit meaning like there's specific concrete questions they're answering that you should be answering uh, versus implicit. So if it's just this open ended essay, what, what do they really want to know? Um, Kritika, I'll just put it to you, like, what, how do you approach that? What do they want to get out of it? So, so first of all, I think like, you know, uh, anybody who's attempting all these B-School essays are really brave. Uh, because like, you know, if I ask you, Eric, what matters to you the most and why? You're going to be like scratching your head, head you know, because it's not a direct question. So yeah. what we are looking for would be what contributed to your success. How have you been like searching success? How have you been defining success? How have you been growing over these different periods of time? And, you know, obviously like what matters to you. But when you like examine it more, you know that, you know, there's not probably like one thing that kind of defined your uh, trajectory so far there are like you know multiple things that happened to you and then how you responded to them and so on so I feel that um, like Bara said before you are applying for a school that's going to help you become better leader for the future and tackle all the challenges uh, that are coming ahead of you so they always look for sparks of I should say like you know academic excellence uh, the ways that you have like you know contributed to your community and then obviously like you know where you have demonstrated leadership and I think um, for these open-ended questions, that's why like having, as you said rightly, like an idea bank of uh, incidents or instances or even your own traits to refer to would be so helpful. Yeah. 
You know, very often I think um, if they're asking that open qu ended question or not, either way, at the end of the day, at the end of you know going through your application, and often your application files are read by at least two people in the admissions team or sometimes alumni. Every school does it a bit differently. Um, and you can learn those things by attending webinars. It's all part of your research process to understand how their admissions process works at each school. You'll find it can be vastly different. But what do they really want to know? I think every school wants to know, first of all, who are you, right? Uh, like talking about some experiences and so forth. Obviously, highlighting any kind of leadership or teamwork or international experiences play out very well in resumes or essays. But why, as you said, Critico, why are you choosing them? Why are you knocking on their door? You knock on someone's door, they want to know, hi, who's there? Who are you? What do you want? Um, also, why now? Why are you applying for an MBA in general? Why this school? Why at this time in your life and in your career? And also, maybe why this country? Like, if you're applying for an international school or a program outside of your own country, well, why are you attracted to Spain or Canada or France, you know? So be, you have to be ready to answer those things, be thinking about those things. Beyond that, goals. Something I often share, it's kind of like a, a table or a matrix I share with my clients. I call it a, a goals matrix uh, to help you break down and think about your goals in terms of like what function do you want to work in, like what role, right? In what industry or what sector of business and where in the world, thinking through the short, medium and long term of your career. Now, schools may actually define for you how they see short, medium, and long term. Uh, but if not, a good general rule of thumb is short term is immediately after your degree is over, up until maybe two, three years. Midterm, like two, three, up to maybe five years or so. And long term, seven or 10 and onward. <clears throat> so kind of average way to break things down in terms of like thinking about goals. They want to, you know, see if you're capable of thinking through your own career trajectory. Obviously, this is not a contract. This is not set in stone and you're not going to be held to like, it's like, hang on, you said you wanted to work in oil and gas in, you know, Gibraltar or whatever. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, you know, and very often, I think I would venture to say more than 50% of people in their MBA programs pivot or change in some way. They deviate in some way from what they plan to do in their essays. And that's okay. First of all, I think that's a sign that the program is working, that you're meeting fantastic professors, teaching you new ideas. You're meeting alumni, you're meeting companies, you're being inspired. Um, and you're adapting. You're, you're adapting. adapting. Yeah. And, I'll, yeah, and speaking of adapting, like economies change, you know, world circumstances change, geopolitics and so forth. We've gotten into this before in MBA waves, but, you know, being nimble is a very good thing. So, yeah. Don't be afraid that like you're going to be, you know, set in stone with these things. But being able to talk about that in the also what's good is having a plan A, B and even C. Like if you're looking to change industry and function and move to a new country, this is what we call a triple transformation. That can be a challenge. Um, some schools will say, yeah, we can we, we, we do those transformations. Some schools are like, mm. um, you know, they, they're a little bit leery of that because they think that may not be uh, necessarily a fully developed idea or a fully mature idea. And it might be about um, before applying for an MBA, say this year, that maybe if you're changing to a new country, maybe learning the language in that country would be a, a good idea, not only respectful, but smart. Um, <laughs> um, if it's about changing to a different industry, like maybe there's something you can do to be more in the know and more you know, connected into that industry before you try to do an MBA. All these things that are steps you can take leading up to your MBA that will make that, um, bridging that gap and I do see an MBA as a bridge or any degree as a bridge to, like I said, get into the future version of yourself, more feasible, more realistic. So it's a sort of like demonstrating your professional maturity. And I think these are the things that you want to convey in your essay that are maybe implicit and not directly asked. But besides telling that good story, you want to make sure that they walk away with not only wanting more, but also having an idea of these, these, these important points where they would feel comfortable opening their doors to you and saying, hey, join us. So um, that was a lot, but um, we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. Any final comments about essays or anything, suggestions for round one or looking forward? The only thing I want to say, we sort of touched on this before, is like obviously spelling and grammar is important. Word choice is important. Um, sure. There's a certain point that you get to in writing that you almost have to pull yourself back from what the words say and just like look at like is the period in place is that the right like is that a comma should I use a colon should I use a semicolon like it's the copy editing part of it and it's really at the very end that you would do that but I do encourage people to you know it's okay if it's not perfect like 
obviously you want to use the right name for the school or you want to use the right name for the programs as best as possible. So you kind of need to almost like have a fact check and then have this copy editing just to make sure that this is all, that it's all correct, not from the storyline, but from a just, um, I don't even know what you would call it. It's almost like the, the scaffolding. Like a hygiene check. I like a what? Like a hygiene check. At the yeah, very end, to yeah. Make sure that you have the basic stuff done and so on. It's almost like looking at the blueprint of what what's happening and not getting. And you can always go back to like, am, like, am I really saying what I mean to say? And is that preposition the right one? And you know, even if you're a native American English speaker, you know, sometimes those can get kind of wonky. Like, and you know, some depending on if you're not a native English speaker, then you do want to make sure that you're going through and doing it as as, as good as possible because, you know, on the GMAT and the GRE, you're just having that one chance, but the essay, you have multiple chances and time to work through. So if you don't work through all of that or find the support for it, that's also speaking to your application. Right. And one quick thing that I would like to add is the way that you write your essays kind of like can help you to navigate the interview. So example would be like, you don't want people to uh, be left hanging with questions that they have to like use the interview to ask you. But it should be more of, wow, I know this person. I want to just talk to that person more. And then I think I'm going to be like looking at these aspects. So it's more of how you can um, like uh, kind of set up your interview for yourself would be based on how well you utilize the space and also the connection between the different essays. I know like some of the schools have like only a couple or uh, just like one essay and so on. Um, and the other one being like a like an additional essay and so on. But many of them are going to be interconnected. And so you want to make use of it and look at it as a whole and not just like an essay by itself. So that and that that exactly again, I think, uh, comes back in a full circle to the point that we showed, like, you know, think of it as a whole story and you are like a whole a whole person. And you're showing your story in these different pieces. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Critic, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone in the audience who joined us for this really dense and interesting episode of MBA. We were talking all things about essays, gearing up for those round one deadlines just about three weeks from now. I uh, wanted to, um, first of all, mention uh, Critica's uh, company, Career Labs, and put the website on there. If you'd like to reach out to her, this is how you can reach her at uh, the Career Labs. Dot com, And also remind everyone, if you're looking for a great admissions consultant, the best place to look is on the AGAC website. That's agac.org, which that website is just there. Um, don't forget to join in next week. We have a really interesting episode from marketing professor from the University of Michigan and author of The Things We Love, Aaron Ahuvia. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but... Ahuvia. Ahuvia. Thanks, Bara. Uh, Speaking about like, what's the deal behind all the marketing of all the MBA programs, finding a program that you'll love um, when you like peel back the layers of what all those business schools are doing to promote themselves. I think that's like super interesting. Uh, I will not be joining next week, but Bara is going to take it away uh, with how many guests that week? Is it just him? Yeah, right just now it's just him, but I, I have an idea that I'm going to run by, but right now it's just Aaron. And I've known Aaron for like 25, 30, I've known him for a really long time. So it's going to be super exciting to talk to him about, about his book and his work. Nice. Anyway, thank you once again, uh, Kritika. Thank you also, Thomas, for uh, your comment today. And we'll see you guys all next week at mbawaves.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.